Hello, and welcome back to Zim Explorer. I'm Dr. Abstract, and in this Zim Explorer, we're going to take a look at Node Package Manager. Ooh, so let's go to the Zim site now at zimjazz.com. All right, this is a kind of a big, sort of scary topic. We've been bordering on Node Package Manager for some time and have launched things in Node like ZimSockets and a few other of our tools. Uh, and uh, developers have wanted to get uh, Zim working in Node Package Manager for some time. We've gone through about four or five different developers trying to get that to happen. And finally, with the help of Joanne, we we have, and so that's wonderful, and we're about to, well, we've just launched this, and this is the video that explains how it all works. So we've got uh, potentially two people watching this video. <laughs> well, more than two people, two types of people. Those that know Node and don't know Zim, and one, they're coming from Angular, React, or Vue, or Svelte, or something like that, and they wanna use a Canvas framework like Zim in their work, so we're gonna show you yeah, how that can be done. And then there's people that know Zim and they have no idea about uh, Node Package Manager or Angular, Vue, React, or Svelte, etc. So we're uh, kind of going back in between, between the two of these and let's uh, just kind of take it easy from the beginning and hopefully it'll go all right. <laughs> Looking forward to it. We've just spent the last, uh, well, about a week preparing all of this stuff and so uh, this is a grand launch of it, I suppose. All right, here's the Zim site. And what we've done is under the code section here, we have put a node package manager right there, NPM. Previously, it was available under the tools. And you had to kind of go dig for it a bit, but we've now brought it right out. And there is our uh, node package manager. So node package manager in general, is a place, a repository in a sense, where a whole bunch of uh, code is stored. Many of the various frameworks and libraries are there. And uh, these often will rely on other code. And so all of these are put in packages. They're called packages. And they each say, each package sort of says which packages it needs. And that way it keeps track of updates and all that stuff for us. So that's the general gist of Node Package Manager. So we do have a CDN right here. So Zim is available on a CDN. And in general, if we just pop up here, uh, how we usually do it is go to the code section and then copy this template. This is the template right there that calls the CDN right here. And we paste that into an HTML page and run it. And that's all we have to do. So that's the CDN uh, way of doing things. Node Package Manager can be a little bit trickier. In the end, it's really, uh, it's really only a couple of command lines. Uh, but therein lies sort of the rub. It's, it's a bunch of, it's, you know, it's command lines. And however, things like VS Code, most of us, I think, are using VS Code for our editor. If you're a beginner and haven't and aren't using VS Code, you probably should go get VS Code. It's free and easy, and uh, that'll get you started uh, correctly with all this stuff. Uh, if you're an expert and use some other IDE um, or other editor, then you know, keep on doing that. I'm sure you can figure out how to do this. Anyway, that's how we've been doing it all along, and you will see under the examples that there are hundreds of examples all done that way. So just from the CDN, quite easy. We also teach kids how to code and, and school and stuff like that. So uh, we'd rather them not have to deal with Node Package Manager stuff. There has been a dev site, and there still is a dev site here at Zim, which has promoted more of the Node Package Manager routine. So you can also get into the files that we're looking at through the dev side. Okay, um, so that's there. And what we're going to do is open up one of these templates right here and load Zim into that. There's no real reason to load Zim with Node Package Manager if you're not using one of these or something similar perhaps. 
uh, you may as well just use a CDN. So, I mean, I wouldn't wish upon anybody really going out and figuring out all this node stuff when they could just use a CDN. Uh, but anyway, uh, that's the idea. And then developers would get parts of these things like components or being able to drag or any of these types of effects that are happening here, uh, emitters, etc drawing with the pen. So then they could bring in these things into the rest of their apps. Uh, just be known that some of you are using those apps for things like components, and it would probably be much easier for you to just use the Zim components. We've got tons of components in Zim, like 40 of them. That's probably more than you have. Well, I don't know that for sure. Uh, and also all sorts of conveniences and fun things. So I mean, in terms of components, you can you have all sorts of components available on Zim already: sliders, buttons, dials, uh, etc. All right. Um, so if you've never really used Zim and you're a developer and you're only using this because you think you need to put it into React, Angular, or Vue, uh, perhaps pop on over to Zim here. If you go to the gold bars, for instance, there's an intro, and the intro shows you kind of what what's going on there. There's all sorts of examples in here. There's an editor so you can uh, use Zim online in an editor. And then the learn section tells you how to get all started. Okay, so if you've never used Zim and you think you have to use it in, in one of the frameworks, then you don't. Uh, probably be easier for you if you didn't. However, uh, maybe, it's, maybe it's okay. Maybe you're so used to your, 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 your node stuff that you just want to use it there. So let's uh, see how that's done. Once again, under code, we've now officially launched a node package manager section right here. And then you can go visit Zim on node package manager. This is coming from GitHub. So there's the GitHub. Basically, the information that's on this front page at node package manager is also in the GitHub readme, which is right here. So same information. Um, we show some examples of coding in Zim and then how to get started. It's also another good way. And then we sort of, this is started sort of saying, hey, we just go copy the, the template there. However, if you want Node, so there's where we just were. There's also these other packages. And what we'll do is we'll just install one of the templates, first of all, for, say, a view. And then we'll also install one of these helper modules to show you kind of what that's like. All right. Here's the basic setup of how to use plain Zim without any of those frameworks uh, in Node Package Manager. So there's setting up Node to make sure you have it, setting up this thing called Vite to make sure you have it, making a project folder, and then installing Zim then taking this little template right here and pasting it in over top of whatever was there. And then also, if you want this thing called TypeScript, TypeScript generally goes hand in hand with Node. It helps you determine the types of um, objects that are there. And then let's see. So that's the idea. We're not going to install that way, but it's just a few lines of setup. And you might be wondering, where do you actually put these little lines? Sometimes I wondered that. Uh, there it is, um, talking the way through and how to get a terminal. But we're going to show that live, so that's why I just kind of went over that quickly. Underneath here is, oh, that's how to run it. So that runs a development environment, it's called, where you're testing it. And then you can also build it. And that packages it up and gives you files that you can then put on your web server. And there you go. One more time, I notice here that Zim's a front-end Canvas framework here. We can do all of that stuff without Node. And uh, you might just want to go there instead, OK? So another sort of thing saying, OK, you don't have to do all that. Just, just run it here. All right, anyway, coming on down, we've got the templates now, so other frameworks. And thanks again to Joanne for helping out there. Uh, and here we have some templates. So uh, we're going to go grab one of those templates. Why don't we go there now? So press it. And anywhere you can see a link to the templates, here we are. And there's a templates folder right here. 
So probably the easiest way to start, I mean, we could look in here, but then it goes to the different folders and it's not the easiest to download these individual folders. So probably the, uh, the easier way is to go back to the front page here and you see the code window right there, or the, sorry, the code button, hit download zip. So that's what we're wanting you to do. Download the zip and we've got the zip uh, downloaded already. Okay, so once again, we're at zim.js-templates. These are forked from Joanne, who, like I said, had helped work on all these. We've, however, updated the templates since then and just thought it'd probably be easier to keep everything on the, um, the Zim GitHub. All right, so we now have, uh, we want you to um, unzip those. So that's a zip file. And here's what it will look like. So there's going to be a templates folder in there, and I'm opening that up, and I have four. Uh, I can't make those really any bigger. Okay, anyway, four different templates. I also have a GitHub folder right here, and this is where I'm, I'm keeping all the stuff that we're working on, the Zim on GitHub, the various helper modules, and some other projects I've worked on before as well. You may not have a folder like that. I'm not sure which way is the best order to get that happening, uh, but uh, maybe, you, maybe you do have one. It really doesn't matter too much, but what we don't want to do is work right on the template folder. We want to copy it. So I'm going to grab views, I guess, and copy it over here. Copy. So now I have view, zim, and ts stands for TypeScript right there. Maybe that uh, we want to give that a certain name for your project, whatever your project name is, just give it a name. Shall we give it a, an example, F2, and we will say Zim NPM. There we go. And that put it to where, right here. Zim NPM, or whatever your specific project is. Baseball! Oh. <laughs> can only imagine. All right, how about Ultimate Frisbee? All right, so I'm putting that over here, and there's our uh, app folder. Inside the app folder, we have everything we need, but we're not going to look at it this way. Rather, we're going to just drop this onto VS Code. So if I reduce this down, there's my VS Code icon right there. That's what it looks like. And I'm picking up the folder and dropping it on VS Code. That's probably the easiest way to start off. You can also go file and then open a folder and find the folder and open it that way. Uh, but you want to make sure that you're, you're only looking at this stuff. And that'll just make it easier as we install the node stuff. Okay, don't, don't be in some other larger folder and have this folder inside that and then try and be doing this because then all your node files will install in the wrong place unless you're careful, perhaps. Okay, so there we go. Uh, hopefully that's good so far. Let's open this up again so that we can see or um, increase the size here so we can see what we've got. Their most important file probably, or a starting file, I guess we could call it, and a file that's in common amongst all of the node packages is this package.json right here. And what that does is it tells you information about the package along with what dependencies it has. So these are other packages that it needs. We're doing a view project, so it needs view, and there it needs Zim. And we've got a version of Zim in there. This little arrow means above that version, or this version or above. So if new versions of Zim come along, uh, that is up until the 16. If, as soon as that becomes 17, you may have to, or we'll adjust that. But anyway, if these increase, the minor versions there, then it will just load the latest version for you now that we've used that little arrow there. These dev dependencies mean that as we're working, we require these things. But once we, um, once we build this, it won't put them in there. We only need this TypeScript while we're building. We don't need it once it has been built. Okay, so that's the idea between dependencies and dev dependencies. 
Hmm, alrighty. So that's the package.json. And the other thing you're looking for is how does this all begin? This package.json, once we run it, uh, will bring in our dependencies for us. So why don't we actually do that right now? So running, uh, installing node. So we want to install these things. Right now they're not in here. So we didn't distribute it with the packages already in. They're not there yet. So we want, um, I made this so big that I can't quite see the terminal. So there's the terminal. You can say new terminal or take a look. Control shift uh, back tick there. So that's up in your top left corner. Or a nice easy way is come down here and you see how my cursor is just at the bottom here turns into that. I just lift that up and there's my terminal. Okay, so uh, you want to make sure that you're in your current file and, and or folder and that worked out well for us because that terminal is definitely right there. And then you type in the magic words npm, which is what all of pretty well all of our uh, commands are. And then we say install like that. And that's going to install all this stuff for us. And we hit enter. It takes just a little while. It sort of depends. And don't worry too much about various warnings and stuff. You see these things are always in there. Uh, this little thing right here with the number signs or hash signs, that's a progress bar and we're done. Okay, so there it just finished. And now if we look up here, we have all of the node modules that it went and, and got. There's Zim. All the rest of these are things that, well, aside from maybe the Vite, they're either things that Vite needs or they're things that Vue needs. And there's a bunch of them in there, isn't there? Okay, so that just installed stuff. Uh, here's the Zim package right here. And there's the Zim package.json. So this is telling us information about Zim in here including any of its dependencies, which happens to be our version of CreateJS. But luckily, if you look in there, that started with at zimjs. So up here, there's at zimjs, there's CreateJS, and here's the stuff that's in there, including its package, and blah, blah, blah. All right. Okay. There's also these things called typings, and you don't have to worry about it too much, but sometimes we have a lot of type. Uh, there's thousands and thousands, there's like three thousands of typing, pa uh, lines of typings. So uh, sometimes we miss them. And if we're missing them, you can go and add your own. But if you do go and add your own, also let us know so that we can fix it. Don't just say, I know how to fix that, fix it yourself. Um, these tell us what parameters the various Zim classes and methods can have and what properties are available and so forth. So that's called typings and with TypeScript. And the Zim typings are in this TS for TypeScript source. So that's in the Zim module right here. Here's Zim. There's the TS source. And in there are, we put CreateJS typings as well. We're not really supposed to do that, but we have kind of are helping maintain CreateJS and so forth. And this was just the easiest way at the time. Uh, there's Zim right there, and here's the index.t.d.ts. Uh, That's what where the typings are, and we're bringing in CreateJS typings, and that allows us to specify CreateJS things inside of here, like CreateJS containers and so forth. Um, okay, so anyway, this is as you can see a very long file that has all of the classes, hopefully that Zim has. There's the shader class that we just got added. And it will help you because as you start typing, if you want a new shader, you're going to get uh, all of these parameters will pop up in the code hinting for you. One thing to note in the Zim typings is that we most of the time have two different ways. So there it is. I'm not going to I'm not going to highlight over it, but take a look. I'm pointing at it with my finger uh, because if I go to to uh, oh I can't get here. Okay, I thought it would go away. Uh, it had been going away. So there's this thing called config or width. What that means is Zim has Zim Duo. We call it where you can specify a configuration object or you can specify parameters as normal. 
So we have to have two ways that we can call the constructor for many of these and most of these. It's called ZimDuo because it was launched in Zim2. Apparently, that's what Python does. And we didn't know that, so for eight years we were saying, oh, Zim, Zim Duo is great, great, great. Oh, look how amazing this is. Because it is really amazing. It's very, very convenient. Let me just say that once again. Uh, we can pass in parameters in a normal order, or we can pass in a configuration object that has the names of the parameters as its properties. Okay, so in this case, if you pass in a config object, then you have you can provide the names in here, and you don't care about the order, and you don't care about ones that are missing, so you don't have to put in undefined, undefined, undefined throughout. Okay, or if you do them in order, then then you do. All right, and that uh, works either way. Note that many JavaScript frameworks and libraries have configuration objects, but we don't know of any that have both configuration or either configuration objects or regular parameters. Okay. Um, good. Well, let's leave it at that. So if there's a TypeScript typing that's missing or just a little bit broken, uh, perhaps it's the wrong type or we've forgotten a parameter or something like that, you can actually come in here and fix it yourself. But if you do, and, can, and then you can continue working. If you do, then please let us know. And you can let us know on the forum. So that's zimjs.com slash forum or forum.zimjs.com. Okay. Yay. All right. Closing that down. Right. We've been saying a lot of words, but so far we've only done one command, haven't we? Uh, that's the zim package. Our one command down here was npm install. Okay, so we did npm install. Now we are going to go np out of there. Now down here in our terminal, we are going to go npm run dev. So that's the second step. And these steps, by the way, are out there in the uh, in the in the GitHub file or the Node Package Manager README. All right. This is the second step. <laughs> and now uh, we follow this link by following what it says there. Alt click on that link. So I hold down the Alt key. Or I attempt to hold down the Alt key. There we go. And here it is. So this is just run a live server in a sense, Zim with view. And here is the code that's in the template. We have a draggable circle with um, an emitter that's popping. Our circle is animating to change colors. We can also use a dial to change the size of that circle, and we can draw on the background. Woohoo! Okay, so double clicking on the pen bits will make that go away, and we can draw on the background. Okay, so there she be, and we can just leave this open because if we make a change, I'm gonna put that out of the way, well, we have to go find where we're going to make that change. Where do we make that change? That's a good question. Okay, so clo let's close our uh, node package manager modules, our node, node modules there. Usually you don't really have to go in there and look at them, you're just sort of working out here. And now we have to find out where view puts the, the code in a sense. So you can kind of find that out by going to the index page here and then it says go to source slash main. And so we open up source and we go to the main, which is probably that. And then it says, uh, get the app view. <laughs> okay, so <laughs> there it is right there. It's got a view uh, little icon there. And indeed, this is the one that we want. This is where it's all at. So you can ignore those other ones. And in the app view, we have some stuff. We're importing some things from Zim. We're importing some things from view. We're mounting, so this is view now. We're mounting the frame, but a tricky bit in the dev environment only when you run dev is that every time you make a change, the dev doesn't really load a new page. It just kind of uh, unmounts, it's called. And that would end up leaving a Zim frame around 
and then adding another Zim frame to it. So there was a lot of early, like early on when developers were trying to use Zim in here, it was very confusing because things, there were multiple copies of it happening. We figured out that uh, there's an on mounted and there's also down below here, on before unmount. And before we totally unmount, we want to dispose the frame. So over the last week, well, actually even starting way back in Zim 10, that's a few versions of Zim ago, we really took a look, careful look at Dispose and made it so that Dispose really worked well. Anyway, coming into here though, it's, it's just a little bit beyond that. We want to make it as easy as possible for developers. So if we brought in physics or if we brought in 3JS, or three stuff, they would have to know how to dispose that. And we didn't want you to have to put yet another dispose in here. You could. You could sort of say, hey, when I make my 3D stuff or my physics stuff, store it and then dispose it. But what we did is we brought those disposes into the frame.dispose, including all of the recent work in this thing called texture actives, which was uh, tricky to do. Okay, but it hopefully will all work now. So as I come up to the top here, that's why we've declared frame outside here so that we can use it both in the on mounted and in the on before unmounted, <laughs> whatever the heck that was. <laughs> what was that again? On before unmounted, yep, okay. That was right. Um, so we can use the frame there as well to dispose it and that will prevent uh, duplicates from happening. And that seems to be the case in all of the other uh, frameworks as well. Uh, that would be Svelte, React, and Angular. Angular is done a little bit differently, and there's more code in Angular to sort of help that work. But this it's all trying to solve roughly the same thing. So once that's out of the way, it wasn't too bad. Then it's just normal Zim. So inside here basically is our frame. When Joanne made the template, he chose to use a uh, an arrow function for the ready rather than a separate function, and that's fine as well. Most uh, professional coders, developers, know how to use arrow functions just fine. In our template for the CDN, we split that into a call, like just a callback of a ready function and just put a ready function in there. It avoided the arrow function, which is a little friendlier for kids, okay? But uh, that's fine, we know how to do that here. In this specific case, um, so that the dial and the pen, like when I draw the pen here, whee, it's still kind of drawing. And when I use the dial and my mouse goes outside, it's still operating. Without that, you, uh, let's comment this out. So as soon as I comment this out and hit save, it just refreshed over here. And now if I use the dial, oh, it still worked. <laughs> oh, no, there it stopped. Oh no, that's because the dial hit. Huh. And that looks the same thing too, F12. Well, what do you know about that? Um, commented, I saved it, that, that didn't change. Let's try green, just to make sure. Green, mouse move outside, true, okay. And what do we got? There's green, I'm drawing, I'm dragging. And now try the dial. Oh, it still is moving outside. Maybe it depends. Um, seems to be working here just fine. When we were maybe testing in Svelte or something, uh, that was needed to make that work. Well, whatever. Okay. Uh, so shall we go through the template then? Just quickly. If you haven't seen Zim before, this is how we're starting with a frame. We're scaling, uh, scaling is often, there's a, a fit mode, a full mode where you can go full screen, a fit mode will fit it into the browser window. We tend to show, demonstrate with a fit mode, it's the easiest to, to code with, and that's when Zim is taking up your whole browser window. But here in the app environment, it's often the case where you wanna use the rest of your app, have, you know, wanna let that have room on the web page. And then Zim is being inserted into a div tag or something like that. And so that's what's happening here. Uh, down below we have Zim. Right there is in a div tag with an ID. And this needs to match. So we're scaling to that into that div tag. And we're putting it at this width and height. You can make a change. 
So I'm making it 400 and coming over here and it's 400 like so. Let's go back to gray. And we're back to gray there. All right, um, that's a little bit about the beginning of the template. There's more parameters there too, including how we can load in images and sounds. So if you wanna load in images and sounds, there's an assets parameter in here and a path parameter for uh, the path in there and a uh, progress bar parameter if you want, called progress, I think. All right, and then down in here, we have an intro to Zim. So there's links we can code in the editor and any of the things that you find in the editor. Here, I'll show you what the editor looks like. So I'm copying that. Here's the editor, or indeed, if you were in Zim, this is the Zim site right here. And there's the editor right there. And uh, we uh, can look at zaps. So zaps are maybe a couple hundred different examples of things that you can do inside of here, sprites and sprite sheets. Um, that didn't uh, load very well, did it? What's going on with this one, code? Take a look at it. Multiple cams. Oh, do I want to use a cam? I can't use a cam while I'm using this cam that I'm talking into. And then here's a shader with lights. Oh, that's nice. That's better than the sprite anyway. That certainly was a hidden sprite, wasn't it? Uh, and all sorts of different ones. Art, amazing circles. Ooh. So if you want to find out how to do it, you hit code like that. And there's the Zim code that made that art. You can then bring the code over into the right-hand side here and test it yourself. So now, once that's tested, you can say, no, I don't want orange, I want blue. And if I hit save it, uh, there it is, blue and not pink, I want white. Okay, and so any edit, any changes over here, you can see over there. So if you wanted to, you could grab this code right here. Um, this automatically has a frame, so what we're doing is specifying the color to be black afterwards, like that, using a property of the frame, F. You're given F, S, W, and H. You'll be given those as well. So frame, stage, width, and height. So if we copy this code right here and come on back into our app. Mm. Oh, we were gonna go through that code, weren't we, and here I am gonna just delete it all. That's the template, it's ready to be deleted. There it goes, it's gone, we'll come back to it. Here's some messy looking code. I hit save here and we go find it uh, somewhere else. It's down here. Okay, and we save that here. Loop is giving us a problem. Cannot find the name loop. Ah, right, so that's uh, to do with how we're importing here. We're not using these anymore. So we would put a loop in here and that gives us the, the loop function right there. And is there any other one? I, uh, oops, uh, let I, I guess probably. Oh no, we don't need to let I. Why can't we use I there? I guess we, we can, we can't. Parameter I implicit type any. Hmm. Okay, whatever. Label on arcs not being used. So that, that one's not being used like that. And then I hit save and a refresh over here. Ooh. Okay, and we have our art. Doesn't quite fit in that window very well, uh, but that's the idea. So you just had an example of coming over from the editor. One thing that you'll need to watch out for is we might have needed to import other things there. There are ways that we can avoid this. So one way is to import Zim from Zim, like that. And that's the that will have our namespace. And then we have to go, you see how the frame doesn't know what the frame is? I don't know what the frame is here. We'd have to go Zim dot. And over here we'd go Zim dot. And then we'd go Zim dot. So that's kind of annoying, wouldn't you say? That's annoying. 
So there is also a way that we can put all those as global by in here going zimplify like that. Actually, that might be possibly zim.zimplify. I'm not sure. I think we globaled that though. No, that's probably just simplify. So if we go zimplify, then we get given all these things. It just worked. There we go. However, it's still not knowing the typings, which means we probably don't want TypeScript, which is this stuff right here. So take that away, and then you don't get the typings. Uh, let's see if you roll over something, do I? No. And so I'm going to go a series, round bracket. I'm not getting typings. Okay. However, it's back to sort of Zim on the CDN, where you don't need to put... Um, you don't need to import things specifically, and you don't need to have the namespace. It's been tricky for us. See, uh, we work with a lot of things in Zim, and it's kind of a pain in the neck to bring it, each one individually. You guys may be used to it. If you're out here on Node Package Manager and TypeScript and stuff, you may be used to doing that. But we're talking, oh, I don't know, maybe 30, 40, 50 things that we use in Zim that we would have to have up in here, so that's kind of like annoying. However, the namespace is uh, also annoying to put the namespace on. And we're, like I said, teaching kids, so we'd rather not have them do it. And heck, I'd rather be a kid. I'd rather not have to put all those things in there. So that's why all of the stuff that we're building, we don't do that. You can still get typings. So even with the namespace off, but you just don't use TypeScript here, what you would do is Put your code in a JavaScript file, and, no, and VS Code will give you typings as you go. It just doesn't force them, or it gives you the code hints as you go. All right, so that can still be done without all of this stuff if, if we want it. I really don't care. I don't use it particularly. All righty. Anyway, blah bitty blah bitty blah Let's undo this, though, because we want to go through our template a little bit. So we're back to our template here, and back to our template here. If you're coming from somewhere like Vue or Angular, React, Svelte, etc., and not used them before, then uh, yeah, let's go over the template just a little bit together, shall we? And we'll make this. I just wanted to point out though, if you have used them, we just did this all in sort of two commands, didn't we? Where we went npm install that installed all of the things from our package here. npm install, installed all this stuff. And then we went npm run dev. And both of those things, if we go out to the Zim templates here, here's the first step. Well, there's the downloading and opening up the terminal. npm install, npm run dev. Angular is a little bit different where you want to make sure Angular is installed in a certain way. Then you do the npm install, but ng serve instead of npm run dev. This is a Vite thing, I think. And Angular has its own thing. I'm going to show you how to add the physics modules, but or, or sorry, not the physics, but the um, three module, I think. Uh, we'll do that in a bit. There's how to do without the TypeScript stuff. Okay, so if you don't want to use TypeScript, it talks about it there. And then there's your Zimplify. Okay. Um, so all the steps are out here if you need them. And the next step here, though, is uh, to just take you through what's in the template. I don't want to spend too much time there. Uh, there's lots of examples. You saw that. There's also the code page for the CDN if, if you want to get out of all this or try just the CDN. Here's shapes. So there's a circle, new circle. We have this thing called chaining. So we're doing a lot of chaining. Chaining just means that the center method returns the object so that the next thing on it is on the object. Drag also returns the object and therefore this is why I don't use this stuff, because look at it, it's just like constantly getting in the way. So usually I turn it off. I've left it on for this so that we can roll over things and see that. But as I'm a teacher and as I'm demonstrating stuff here, I, I, it's just constantly getting in the way. 
So I usually turn all that stuff off. <laughs> anyway, let's make this a little bit bigger. And uh, so because drag returns the object as well, the object ends up getting put in circle. Usually, or quite often, we don't even need to store into variable because we just chain one thing onto the next. Dut, 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 dut. So Zim's got a lot of chaining. However, we needed a circle this time. Oh, we're chaining more. There's chaining on animate. I've just broken that up because I wanted to put a little comment about animation in there. So here we are animating, and we're animating our whatever color, purple, to red in two seconds. We're rewinding and we're looping. I mean, you can't really get much easier than that, can you? Uh, we can do it without these squiggly brackets and just say animate, color red, uh, two for the time, but unfortunately rewind is up quite a ways away. You've still got a callback function, you've got the easing type, uh, you might have other other things before you end up coming to rewind and loop. So it would be a pain in the neck to do these in order, and that's why we went to Zim Duo, where we use the configuration object. We mention it here as we build the component. So the next topic is components. But as we build the component, we also use the Zim Duo technique so that we could get quickly to a background color. Uh, or maybe there was some other reason why we did it. Actually, I think background color is close to it. Hmm. Anyway, we don't have to use the duo. We could have maybe just put those in being, this is the first parameter, that's the second parameter, this is the third parameter. I can't remember where the background color is. Well, actually, I should know. Hang on, let me just roll over the dial. It goes min, max, step, width, then background color. So we could have done a undefined and background color. It was probably had something else in there at some point that I thought I wanted, uh, like maybe start off at a certain value. But oh yeah, that, that was it. I think we initially were going to a smaller value and I wanted to start with a scale of two. And therefore I would have put uh, this parameter right here. Oh, you can't see it. Can I get up there? 34 more. How do we see the 34 more? <laughs> okay, so not totally helpful in that case. huh? <laughs> there must be a way I could see the 34 more. But one of those 34 more was the starting value. Initially, the dial didn't start with a starting val value. We added that parameter in much later. And rather than disturbing all the earlier parameters, uh, we just left it way at the end. You could always set the dial's current value afterwards as a property. But um, anyway, blah blah blah. Here we are chaining, and things getting in the way again. We're positioning that. Uh, we have pose. We have loc. Loc locates the registration point. Pose here is posing the edge of it to another edge, and in this case, to the right edge and to the bottom edge. That's why it's that distance from the right. And when you pose, it isn't the registration point, which is the thing in the middle. It's the edge to the edge. So pose is really good for uh, positioning things around the sides. Loc will position the or will locate the registration point. You also have center. You have center reg, which centers and does the registration point. And you have add two, which just adds to wherever the x and y is. So those are all chainable. And we have a whole bunch of these short little chainables that was uh, in, that were introduced in Zim fourth, which is the fourth version of Zim, where we went from a functional uh, library for CreateJS to an all-out framework where we extended everything in CreateJS and put methods, all of our functions, helper functions for that. We made methods of them. And so now we're dealing with, did we say here, 40 components and somewhere I thought we mentioned it in here, but it must have been somewhere else. Ah, 80 other methods. Okay, so there were 80 of these helper functions. We put them all onto the objects as methods then. A bunch of them are short and chainable, so instead of using a scale x and a scale y property, we're chaining on a ska. So we've got ska, rote, alp for alpha, ske, ske, s k e for skew. Um, let's see, uh, and a bunch more. Loc, pose, etc. There we are doing a change, a chainable change method. And we say what function to call when we change. And here we're changing the circle scale to the dial's current value. And that's how it is 
scaling that. We can also wire that with just one line. Wire it, basically. So you can check that out if you want. This is already shorter. We would normally use an on. Do we have an on? Yep, there's circle dot on press up. But the on method is not chainable because it returns a value so that we can, or an ID so that we can turn something off. So anything that is chainable needs to return the object. The on method doesn't. So that got to be pretty annoying where, you know, we wouldn't really have to even store this in a dial aside from it'd be nice to use dial there. But if we wanted to, we could take that away and we could collect the event object right there. And we could use e.target uh, dot dot target dot current value. Okay, what's with the e? Hmm. Not sure. Maybe change didn't specify that there's a parameter there, I guess. We'll have to look into that. Same with that other i. Okay, uh, there you go. That would have also worked, and then we don't even have to store dial in a variable. But sometimes it's just a little bit easier to see what you're doing, saying, hey, const dial, and then use the dial here as well. Okay, controls, we have an emitter. So the emitter, we're starting paused. If we didn't start the emitter paused, and note how we jumped right to that parameter. If we didn't start the emitter paused, then it would look like this. I don't see the emitter, do you? Oh, huh. that's interesting. Circle dot on press up emitter. Oh, we didn't add the emitter. So this one located the emitter at the circle, but here we haven't even added the emitter. So if we dot center the emitter like that, there's the emitter going away. So basically an emitter usually just runs. And if we don't want it to run at the beginning, but rather we want it to be paused, then we can start it paused, which is how we had it here. And then even if we dot centered it there, uh, we don't see it because it started paused. Okay, uh, so when we press up on the circle, we're locating the emitter at the circle. Loc normally receives an X. Excuse me, can I please see where I'm typing? An X and a Y there. Goodness gracious me. Thanks for telling me all this, you guys. So it receives an X. <laughs> Why don't we add a couple more? Um, it receives an X and a Y somewhere in there. And this, at least it's not putting it right on top of it. It's just like completely hovered everywhere around it, but on it. Uh, so well done. Anyway, this emitter dot loc X and a Y there, uh, or value, that's what we would want. But we can also locate it at any object that has an X and a Y, including most display objects. So we're going to locate that at the circle. That's another reason we needed the circle stored in a variable up here is we're using it again later. And then we spurt. So there's a method of that which causes it to spurt every time we press up. Woohoo! Boop! Okay, and if it's over here, whoop. I wouldn't suggest doing that. It's a little bit annoying, but it's kind of fun. Actually, I've never done that before. And it's, <laughs> it's okay. Normally, we're blowing up monsters and emitting, or if you win something, you spurt the emitter. And the emitter is highly flexible, so you can customize that. We just launched an emitter tool. You can find that in Zim under the new things that are launched in Zim. So here's the Zim site here. And there's the new stuff, Sim016. And this is the emitter tool right here. So uh, you can do all sorts of things and go ahead and test that if you want. Okay. Here's an example, another example of a control. So we're in controls. The emitter emits stuff that's already built. That's sort of the definition of a control. If the stuff's already built and we're doing something to it, then we throw it in the controls. If it is the stuff that we're building, that's usually in the display objects or in the, uh, the components and the shapes and stuff. Uh, so here's another um, control called a pen, and that's drawing lines. The pens are, are lovely. And, oh, we're showing the Zim V values here. So the reason why we brought this here, one of the reasons is, is here we're saying, make a min and a max size for the pen. You're probably looking at the pen and going, oh my God, why, why would I ever want a pen that looked like that? 
Um, well, if, if you're more on the artistic side, then this is very exciting to have a pen like that. It's really boring to have the plain old pen that everybody always has, like just a line. However, if we didn't put anything in here, uh, then that's what we would get. We would get the plain old boring thing, a line. So now when we come back here, we have a line. So if you need a line, go ahead and make a line. But Zim is the canvas. It's more than just a plain line. It has all sorts of different um, things that we can uh, draw with, uh, like the kite tail. So that's all the tight. Now we could look at it here and figure that out. Come on. <laughs> come on. Come on. When, when we want it, it doesn't come. Uh, there they all are. The pen type is what we're interested in right there. And we could make that kite tail or city or grass or hair or splatter. And then you can customize. So we have these things. Let me undo this. We have these things called dynamic parameters in Zim, where what we're doing is instead of randomly specifying a width, for instance, we could put in a random, that's Zim random, a 100. And what would happen is every time we run this, we would get a pen. No, I thought we would have gotten a pen. Let's see. This is right, not quite right. We want the Zim Duo thing here. So that was, oh no, that's right. So this is Rand 100 and a series. What's going on? What's wrong with that? 100. And over here, oh yeah, we got a big 100. Maybe it doesn't accept a decimal. I don't think that is a decimal. 50, perhaps I just didn't refresh it right. No, I'm not getting anything when I put a random number in there. Does it give me an error? F12. Rand is not defined. Oh, <sighs> okay, so this is me normally typing out my Zim. This is how I would work. I don't want to have to remember to come up here and put Rand in here. Uh, sometimes it does it for you. So I don't know what the difference is, or like when it does and when it doesn't, or if maybe I've been svelte and then it puts it in automatically. But it seems to be that sometimes when I type new circle and hit enter or whatever, it will add it up here for me. And that's kind of neat. I'm kind of going, all right, that's not too bad. I, I can handle that. But anyway, this one didn't add it. Maybe it's when I'm editing something versus typing it. So Rand 50 now. Now we have a Rand 50. And I refresh over here, and there it is. But it's not doing what I expected. Let's refresh it again. Now it's a little bigger. I do it again, bigger, do it again, smaller. So do you see what's happening? We're putting in a random number, but it's picking that random number once and then making the pen always have that size. So we haven't been hard about this. Uh, like say with a, a, an interval, if you make an interval, you put a, a random number for how, how long you want this interval, and then it does an interval for five seconds. Five seconds, five seconds, five seconds, five seconds. And then the next time you run it, it's three seconds, three seconds, three seconds. Three, and it's like, that's not what I want. I want random intervals. Ah! So we made Zim V values. As far as I know, we're the only ones that do this. It might border on something called functional programming. I'm not sure. But uh, there's a bunch of different formats. And this isn't really a Zim lesson, so I don't want to spend too, too much time on it. However, if you're coming in from Vue, Svelte, Angular, React, you probably have no idea about all this, and yet it is quite wonderful. So instead of doing that, we can pass in a min and a max value here, min of 10 and a max of 50. And when we do that and, and refresh here, uh, let's see, we just got an error on the right. Oh, that's a dispose error. Okay, so here we are. Now it's taking, every time it goes to draw a little segment there, it's taking that random number. And that's what gives us that curmudgeon uh, look. You could also randomly pick. So if I wanted to randomly pick, I could go uh, 20 and 50. So that would randomly pick between those two things, or indeed if I had more of them, it would pick between those more things. 
So there they are, kind of not quite as random. They're either going to be one or the other. And finally, if we wanted to, we could do a series. Uh, or well, there's another one as well, which is a results of a function. So based on the results of a function, we can make the size happen, which is quite wonderful. Uh, we can also animate that, by the way. So that's beautiful because then it gets bigger and smaller and it has easing on it. It looks just wonderful mixed grade art. Anyway, a series of five, uh, uh, not, well, let's do something five and then 50 and then 100. Sorry. Oh, we better make that just a little bit bigger, otherwise we might not see it. Okay. So now when we go 10, 10 and 100, ba -doop, ba -doop, that's a series. Little, bigger, bing, and then back down to little. Okay. So that's the Zim V values, we call them, because they were launched in version 5 of Zim. The motion controller is moving that pen when we press move. The motion controller has mouse move, press move, press drag, key down, game button, game stick, swipe, follow, and manual. So note, game sticks are in their game, so you can uh, move that with a joystick. Uh, pretty cool, huh? And then, label on arc, we're doing some text uh, maneuvers. We've got a variety of things that we can do with text, label words. Label words and label letters break up the text into smaller parts so that you can animate each part of those. And we're animating that in, and there's lots more. So yay, did we make it through our explore in general of this template. Uh, okay, I think we did. Well, why don't we leave it at that for this Zim Explorer? I did say that we would load in the a physics module or one of the helper modules, but I'm feeling a little short on breath after that Explorer. How long have we been at this? Um, we've been at it almost an hour. So why don't we leave that and come back and we'll load it into Svelte. So we'll, we'll start up, a, we'll do a second Explorer We'll load it into Svelte, and then we'll bring in the physics package as well. That sounds like a good plan. I am Dr. Abstract uh, here at Zim, zimjs.com. And why don't you come in, poke around, see what's, see what's up, see if you like some things there. And this has been a Zim Explore. So uh, come and join us in at the forum as well. The forum is linked to up in the top right hand corner. It's forum.zimjs.com. We're on Discord if you want to hang out with us on Discord, zimjs.com slash Discord. All right, cheers. Have a good day or night and glad you're here. All right. Come on in, don't be shy, ask any questions and help us out. If you find any errors in our typings, uh, let us know on the forums and we can get that fixed up. Cheers.